Sara Zimmerman Duterte has emerged as one of the most influential political figures in the Philippines. Her ascent marked by resilience, controversy, and an unwavering drive. Born to former Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, Sara's life has been shaped by both her father's legacy and her determination to establish her own identity. Known for her bold approach to governance, Sara has won respect and criticism alike for her tough stance on law and order, her populist appeal, and her strategic alliances. But, just how did she become the renowned vice president of the Philippines? Well, let's start at the very beginning. Born on May 31, 1978 in Davao City, Sara Duterte is the second child of Rodrigo Duterte, who served as Davao's longtime mayor and later as the 16th president of the Philippines and Elizabeth Zimmerman Duterte, a former flight attendant and teacher. Her nickname, In Day, means beloved in Visayan, reflecting her close bond with her Davao community. Sara's upbringing in a politically active household gave her an early understanding of public service, with her father's strict approach to law and order serving as a background. Though she grew up under her father's influence, Sara initially took a different path, attending San Pedro College in Davao and earning a Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Therapy in 1999. Originally planning to become a doctor, she ultimately pursued law, enrolling at San Beda College and later completing her degree at San Sebastian College, Recoletos. She passed the Philippine Bar Exam in 2006, which allowed her to launch a career in public service. Before delving fully into politics, Sara briefly worked as a court attorney at the Supreme Court of the Philippines in 2006. However, she soon found herself drawn to the political arena of her hometown, Davao City, where her father's leadership had already made a significant mark. In 2007, she entered the political world as the vice mayor of Davao City, working closely alongside her father, who served as the city's mayor. This father-daughter partnership allowed her to gain valuable experience in public administration and sharpen her leadership skills. As vice mayor, Sara introduced the initiative in Dai, Para Sa Barangay, an outreach program designed to bring essential government services to Davao's 182 barangays. This program aimed to engage citizens directly in their communities, providing resources and addressing their needs. Her transformational approach to local governance established Sara as a capable and respected leader in Davao, preparing her for larger responsibilities in the years to come. In 2010, Sara ran for mayor, with her father stepping into the role of vice mayor. Winning the election, she became Davao City's first female mayor and the youngest to hold the position. Her leadership style, though echoing her father's strict stance, on law and order, brought a fresh perspective to the role, particularly in terms of economic and social development. One of her significant initiatives as mayor was the Davao Life is Here branding campaign, which promoted the city as a prime location for investment and tourism, especially within the meetings, incentives, conferences and exhibitions, MICE sector. A notable incident during her term was the 2011 confrontation with a court sheriff over a demolition dispute. Sara's public display of anger led to national controversy, but it also reinforced her fierce loyalty to her constituents. While criticised by some, many locals viewed the act as a defence of the people, highlighting her willingness to fight for their rights. Sara's transformative work as mayor extended beyond city management. She was appointed as chairperson of the Regional Development Council, RDC, for Davao, where she implemented policies that helped elevate the region's economic status. Under her leadership, Davao region's Gross Regional Domestic Product, GRDP, grew substantially, from 3.9% in 2011 to 7.1% in 2012, signalling positive changes brought by her administration. The RDC's achievements under Sara's leadership strengthened her standing as a visionary leader with a commitment to progress. Between 2011 and 2013, Davao City received numerous awards and recognitions for its efforts in governance, business, tourism and environmental management. Sara's dedication to transparency and efficiency made Davao one of the Philippines' best-performing cities, 
enhancing its reputation as a safe, economically vibrant and culturally rich destination. Beyond her local duties, Sara also held national roles. She served as a regional officer in the National Movement of Young Legislators from 2007 to 2010 and was a member of the National Executive Board of the League of Cities of the Philippines from 2010 to 2013. These roles provided her with opportunities to collaborate with other political leaders, broadening her influence and reinforcing her commitment to regional unity and development. In 2013, Sara took a break from politics, returning to private practice with Carpio and Duterte lawyers. She also completed the pre-judicature program of the Philippine Judicial Academy, preparing herself for a potential role in the judiciary. Additionally, Sara joined the Philippine Red Cross as a member of the Board of Governors, furthering her involvement in humanitarian work. In 2016, Sara returned to local politics, running once again for mayor. Her platform, Bia Heng Do 30, focused on 10 priority areas, including education, health, poverty alleviation, infrastructure, environmental management, and disaster risk reduction. Each priority area was anchored in practical, achievable goals, such as improving public health care access and promoting sustainable waste management practices. Her administration's continuity and stability in implementing these programs set a solid foundation for Davao City's development. Her dedication to her city earned her national and international recognition, including a nomination for the World Mayor Awards in 2012. She was also selected as the Philippines' top-performing mayor in 2021, with an impressive 93% approval rating in a survey conducted by RP Mission and Development Foundation Inc. Key Initiatives and Civic Engagement, Sara's leadership has consistently reflected her passion for public service. Among her notable programs are Peace 911, a local peace initiative aimed at fostering stability and conflict resolution in high-risk areas. Magnegocio Ta Day, a livelihood project empowering women by providing them with resources to start their businesses. Pugbabago Campaign, a campaign focused on youth development, promoting educational opportunities and mentorship. Keen Gabriel Hotline, a reporting hotline for child abuse cases, reflecting her commitment to protecting vulnerable children in the community. These projects underscore her dedication to community welfare and her advocacy for social responsibility, especially in addressing issues faced by marginalized communities. Aside from her political duties, Sara is an active participant in military and civic organizations. She is an adopted member of the Philippine Military Academy Mahalika class of 1984 and the Philippine National Police Academy Tagapagkalinga class of 1991. Holding the rank of colonel, she serves as the assistant brigade commander of the 2202 Ready Reserve Combined Arms Brigade. Her contributions to the armed forces of the Philippines have been recognized with medals and citations, reflecting her commitment to national defense and public security. As the 2022 elections approached, Sara's political future became a topic of national interest. While many anticipated her candidacy for president, she announced her decision to run for vice president alongside Ferdinand Bongbong, Marcos Jr. Their uni-team campaign focused on unity, stability, and continuity, resonating with a significant portion of the electorate. Her choice to align with the Marcos family was strategic, leveraging the legacies of two prominent political families to secure broad support across regions. The uni-team's message and Sara's strong popularity translated into electoral success as she won the vice presidential race by a wide margin. Her victory was seen as a testament to her influence and the trust Filipinos placed in her leadership. In her dual role as Vice President and Secretary of Education, Sara Duterte has prioritized educational reform to address long-standing issues in the Philippine education system. Her focus areas include enhancing literacy, expanding technical vocational training, and improving educational resources in public schools. By modernizing the education system, she aims to create a skilled and competitive workforce, addressing issues that contribute to poverty and inequality. As Vice President, Sara Duterte stands as one of the country's most influential leaders, with speculation about her potential bid for the presidency. 
Her trajectory in politics, her strong leadership, and her strategic alliances make her a key player in shaping the future of the Philippines. If she continues her community-centered policies and efforts to uplift regional development, her legacy could have a lasting impact on the nation. Sara Duterte's rise from Davao's first female mayor to vice president of the Philippines reflects her resilience, dedication, and strategic insight. Her influence has grown far beyond Davao City, resonating with Filipinos nationwide who admire her commitment to progress and public service. With her focus on education, community development and social welfare, Sara Duterte continues to leave a significant mark on Philippine politics, shaping a future grounded in unity, development and opportunity. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.